If a reputable businessman approached you and told you that he would sell to you at a very attractive price an airport that could fetch you quite a bit of money in the future, what would you do? How much, you ask? No, just a few hundred million dollars. Now, back in 2019, it was reported by the International Airport Review that global airport revenues had grown by roughly 6.2% to a whopping 172.2 billion US dollars. That's why airports seemed like attractive investments, and that's what Emmanuel Nawood capitalized on. In the late 90s, Manuel Nawood pulled off the third largest con in the history by selling off a fake airport to a Brazilian bank for a whopping 242 million US dollars. What exactly did the scam entail? How was he able to pull it off? And what were the repercussions of his scheme? That's what we're going to be talking about today in the non-existent airport fraud, the story of Emmanuel Nawood. Make sure your seat is back and the tray tables are in their full upright position and that your seat belt is correctly fastened. We're in for a bit of a bumpy ride. Welcome back to Business Explained, let's dive into today's story. Now, who is Emmanuel Nawood? How did he come about pulling off one of the biggest scams in history? Well, little is known about Nawood's childhood and early life, but he was born in Nigeria. Before being a fraudulent trickster, Nawood, the former director of the Union Bank of Nigeria, which suggests that he was well-educated and intelligent. And this position of his would also explain why his victims found it so easy for them to trust him. You're probably familiar with Nigerian print scams and have infiltrated the internet over the past few years. The email scams is one of the longest running internet scams and it still rakes in hundreds and thousands of dollars from individuals across the globe each year. Typically, the sender poses as royalty and they lure in their victims by offering a chunk or percentage of an investment that could, supposedly, make the receiver very rich, or by pleading for help to obtain a fortune that they just can't seem to cash out on their own. The scammers then proceed to ask for the receiver's bank accounts so they can transfer the money to them or ask for a small payment or advance fee in exchange for their service. When the money is transferred, the sender seems to drop off the face of the earth or drain the receiver's bank account. Yikes. So what does all of this have to do with Emmanuel Nawood? The modus operandi of the Nigerian prince scam. That's sort of what Emmanuel Nawood did. He pretended to be somebody he wasn't to lure in his victims and get them to shell out a large sum of money. Now, the Nigerian internet scams rose to popularity for email accounts made in the early 2000s, but Nawood already successfully convinced Nelson Sakaguchi, the then director at Brazil's Banco Noresto based in Sao Paulo, that he was the owner of a yet-to-be-built airport and that he was selling it for $330 million. To pull off his con, Nawood impersonated Paul Ugwuma the governor of Central Bank of Nigeria at the time, and contacted Sakaguchi to inform him of the plans to sell the airport. Having been the former director of the Union Bank of Nigeria, Nawood knew vital details and information that helped him pull off his con. So what happened next? Now remember, if you want to learn more about schemes like this, learn more about all things money, get educated about how to do business, become business savvy, and enjoy more videos like these, subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell, and may you be granted with many, many sweet returns. When Emmanuel Nawood reached out to Sakaguchi, he told him of Nigeria's plans to build a new airport in Abuja, the capital city of Nigeria. He told him of how it would be a really good investment, especially since Abuja was one of Nigeria's wealthiest cities. Sakaguchi was hooked. However, unbeknownst to Sakaguchi, Nawood was not alone. His accomplices were Emmanuel Ofula, Nazareb Okoli, and Obum Osakwe, and husband and wife tandem Christian Ikechukwu Anajemba and Amaka Anajemba. To further reel in Sakaguchi, Nawood promised him that he would receive a commission of $10 million if the deal was approved. And to get the ball rolling, Sakaguchi paid Nawood $191 million in cash, and he was to pay the rest of the outstanding balance when the airport was already constructed. It was quiet for a while. It almost seemed that Nawood had gotten away with the scam. However, just as the swift hand began to move, and Nawood's scam began to unravel. 
In August of 1997, the Spanish bank Banco Sananda wanted to take over the Brazilian bank. For them to be able to take over the bank, a thorough investigation into the Brazilian bank's financial statements was necessary. By December, top officials from Banco Sananda began to question why two-fifths of the Brazilian bank's capital was stashed away in an unprotected account in the Cayman Islands. This money, of course, was a money that Nawud had scammed off them. Since there were no new airports anywhere in Abuja, the bank got the police involved. Investigations were conducted, and in 2004, Nawud and his gang of fraudsters were tried before Abuja High Court on 15 counts of bribery and 86 counts of fraudulent seeking advance fees. Prosecutors were able to get Nelson Sakaguchi to testify, and this prompted Nawud and his accomplices to plead guilty. He was sentenced to five years in prison and had to pay a fine of $10 million, which is relatively not much compared to the amount that he stole. The wood scam is what popularized the advance fee frauds. To this day, many are still wondering how such a scam even took off in the first place. Why did Nelson Sakaguchi hand over the money that easily? Why didn't they dig deeper or attempt to oversee the supposed construction of the airport? So many questions have been left unanswered by Nawood's scam, but that didn't stop him from committing even more crime. In 2016, Nawood was arrested for being the ringleader of an attack on the town of Ukpo. He was arrested on 27 charges which included murder, attempted murder, and terrorist attacks. Today he is being held at the Aka prison in the Ambra state. What are your thoughts on the story of Emmanuel Nawood? What would you have done if you were in Nelson Sakaguchi's shoes? Let me know what your thoughts are. Comment them down below in the comment section, and I'll be responding to all of you who comment during the first hour of me posting this video. If you like this video, you should definitely check out my other video called The Story of Johnny Bobbitt and the 400k GoFundMe Scam. If you were to encounter someone who was cold, hungry, and in need of assistance, what would be your first instinct? Would you drop everything and help them, or would you turn around, walk away, and never look back? The world today is a harsh, harsh place. We're all just trying to get by, and sometimes we need a little bit of help to pull through. Well, at least that's what many of us may think. That's why things like donation drives, fundraisers, and charity events have become so popular in society today. However, while such things are done with good intention, it would do everyone a bit of good if they truly understood what they were raising funds for and for them to determine where the money is going. That's why you should go check out the video. It's a cautionary tale and it's the story of Johnny Bobbitt and his $400,000 GoFundMe scam. Stay tuned, stay educated.